Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Sherkamp, and this summer I had the pleasure of working on fluid resuscitation sufficiency analysis with Rachel Lee, Dr. Ryan Kunzer, and Professor Archer Dabrowski in the Auton Lab as part of Carnegie Mellon's RISC Summer Scholar Program. So fluid resuscitation is an initial treatment frequently employed to control bleeding and restore lost blood in critically ill patients, and is commonly done in transport to the hospital either in the back of an ambulance or in a helicopter as shown on the left. However, it is not without risk. You can be over-resuscitated, that is given too many fluids, which may result in organ damage and even death. And you may also be under-resuscitated, which means you were not given enough fluids, and this may fail to control that initial bleeding. As a result, previous work built a machine learning model for fluid sufficiency in pigs, with the idea being when you are sufficient, you no longer need to be resuscitated. So this present work has two main goals. First, we want to develop a model to determine what is start and stop resuscitation for human patients to ultimately improve patient outcomes. And second, we want to demonstrate the ability of pig data to inform human models. These pigs and other laboratory animals can be brought into critical conditions during experiments, whereas humans cannot, and enabling transferring of these insights from these experiments to humans could improve human medical care. So to do this, we use 30 pigs bled and resuscitated in a controlled laboratory setting. And an example is shown on the right. So we have recordings during the bleeding phase and during the resuscitation phase. We also record the baselines of the pigs before they're bled. And this enables us to modify three models from prior work. So the first model does not consider this baseline here. The second model considers the baseline for the pig. And the third model uses the baseline of all the other pigs, but not the current pig we're trying to predict. And we are trying to predict doctor annotations for sufficiency with these models. So now for the humans, we're using 62 patients airlifted to the hospital in 2018 on a stat medevac helicopter and 98 in 2019. We apply three different types of models. We first apply the models trained only on pig data. Second, we train models only on this human data. And third, we use domain adaptation approaches, specifically transfer learning to leverage both the pig and human data. And we predict when treatment was given to these patients to resuscitate them. So these are the pig results for the classifiers based on leave one out cross validation and based on the receiver operating curves shown here and the area under them. We see that the model with a personal baseline of all the other pigs tends to be the best across operating points. So we use this model for pig resuscitation decisions and apply it to the humans. So now these are for the resuscitation results. We have a sufficiency overlap of 0.653, an insufficient overlap of 0.83, an accuracy of roughly 0.7, a precision of 0.8, showing overall that the model can determine what is start and stop resuscitation for pigs with high precision and accuracy. And this image on the right shows an example. In red, we're saying the pig does not need to be resuscitated. And in green is where the doctors have labeled the pig as sufficient and not needing further resuscitation. As we can see for this pig, it performs quite well. So now for the humans. The 2018 humans specifically, we found transfer learning has the best overlap. It has a resuscitation overlap of 0.368 and a no resuscitation overlap of 0.63. So we do want to get those a little bit higher in our future work. And this image down below shows where the patient was given treatment five minutes before and after in those blue windows and green lines. And in red, we're saying we need to resuscitate the patient. So we have some overlap, but we just need to improve it a bit in future work. So overall, this work shows that pig models with only non-invasive vital signs can accurately determine when to resuscitate with high precision and accuracy, and successfully builds on prior work to predict complex clinician annotations instead of heuristics as done in the prior work. And for the human models, we found that pig data may inform human models for fluid resuscitation, improving model performance. However, future work, we're going to continue to develop a more comprehensive ground truth for human data, potentially getting some doctor annotations. We plan to apply more domain adaptation approaches. So this work was supported by the NSF REU program, and we also use the University of Pittsburgh Center for Research Computing. And I also want to thank members of the Auton Lab, especially Rachel Lee, Dr. Ryan Kunzer and Professor Archer Dabrowski for all of their mentorship and support this summer. I also want to thank the clinicians at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine for all of their help and support throughout the summer. And finally, I want to thank everyone behind the RISC program, especially Rachel Birkin and Dr. John Dolan for making this summer an incredible experience. I learned so much and I am truly grateful for this experience. Thank you for watching my presentation.